Those of us who don't live in homes with central AC still need to be cool in the summer. So this video is going to be a deep dive into the world of portable air conditioners. This video is specifically going to focus on ACs and air quality. So which type of AC is the best for air quality and which is the worst? Do ACs ventilate your home? Is your AC drying your air enough? Stuff like that. I'll also give you some simple tips to ensure that your AC unit improves your indoor air instead of polluting it. If I were a more clickbaity channel, I'd probably call these hacks, but I won't. Well, maybe I just did. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical tips for creating and maintaining a safe and healthy home, whether the word home refers to your house or your body. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share if you like this kind of stuff. All right, let's get started. So first, let's talk about single hose portable AC units. They bring in air from your room, cool it, and then expel some of that air carrying its heat outside through a single hose. So while this might sound elegantly simple, it has its drawbacks. Single hose ACs remove some air from the room without replacing it, which can create negative pressure. To equalize that negative pressure, warm and often humid outdoor air flows inside through any gaps or cracks in your building enclosure. And of course, this makes single hose ACs less efficient and more costly to run. But the point I wanna drive home in this video is that negative pressure can also be unhealthy because the replacement air can rush in through moldy areas or places with soot or other toxins and bring those toxins with it. Here's another one of my allergy stories that I always seem to tell in these videos. I used to use a single hose AC unit and every morning my room would smell moldy and I'd wake up sneezing a lot for like the first half hour of the day. If you're thinking that mold issues definitely don't apply to your home, I'll tell you some information later that might make you reevaluate that belief. So single hose AC units can cause outdoor air to flow into the space, making them less efficient in high humidity and heat conditions. So they do ventilate the space and it's essentially exhaust only ventilation, which can cause another issue. When humid outdoor air is pulled into wall cavities, that air can come in contact with cool drywall. And what do you think happens when that happens? If you've been watching my content for a while, maybe you know that it can lead to condensation on that cool drywall, which can cause mold to grow in large quantities. If you're thinking the way I used to, and you're like, what's so bad about mold? It's, it's part of the natural world. How can it hurt us? Watch my video about mold illness. And by the way, using your bathroom exhaust fan 24 seven for ventilation can be problematic for the same reason. Definitely still use it during and for 15 minutes after showering though. To summarize all that, single hose units can create unhealthy scenarios. Okay, now let's move on to dual hose portable ACs. These have two separate airflow paths. What do I mean by that? Outdoor air comes in through one hose, cools the condenser, and then is expelled through the other hose along with the heat, while separately, indoor air comes in the unit, is cooled by the evaporator, and then is recirculated within the room. This setup keeps pressure closer to neutral, which helps reduce the amount of toxic substances that are sucked into the conditioned space. I run this dual hose unit in the same room I used to run a single hose unit in, but with the dual hose, my room doesn't smell moldy after running it all night. Next subject, so I wanna note that dual hose ACs do not bring a significant volume of outdoor air inside, so they do not provide dilution air and are not a substitute for a dedicated ventilation system like an ERV. Now let's talk about window mounted ACs. They're the kind you're probably most familiar with. They also have two separate airflow paths, ensuring that your indoor air stays recirculated and pressure is balanced. Again, that's healthier. Next point, window mounted ACs generally do not bring much outdoor air inside. Some models have those janky little fresh air vents that you like pull out push in, but these bring only a very small volume of air in and it won't be filtered well. So again, it's better to use a dedicated ventilation system like an ERV. So none of these ACs are particularly effective ventilators. But the main point I want to express in this part of the video is that both window mounted and dual hose ACs are better for your indoor air quality than single hose units. Have I belabored that point enough? Sorry. 
My goal with these videos is just to make sure that you walk away as unconfused as possible. So I hope I'm accomplishing that. Like, like if I'm accomplishing that and also comment. But the question remains, should you get a window mounted HC or a dual hose? If you have horizontally sliding windows like I do right now, you don't have a good option besides dual hose. If you have vertically sliding windows, you can technically get either, but window mounted are a better option for sure. Window mounted are quieter because the compressor and one of the fans are situated outside of your house. Also, dual hose are less efficient than window mounted in large part because the hoses radiate heat back into the room, which you don't want. You're trying to cool the room. As I'm editing this video, I'm learning that window heat pumps are about to hit the consumer market. And this is really exciting to me because heat pumps in general are fantastic for many reasons. However, in real life, it's too early for me to recommend the window version. For one, I can't really find a way to buy them yet. And also they're two to $3,000. And most importantly, I'm wary of any type of product that doesn't have an extensive history of use in homes. Regular heat pumps do, but window heat pumps don't. So I'm just gonna sit back and watch for a bit. The Mydea PWHP is one to keep an eye on and Gradient is also releasing one later this year. So when this happens, I'll be making videos about it. So subscribe. Now let's talk about a tip, not a hack, for improving your air quality even further, especially if you already have a single hose unit and can't upgrade right away. But this applies to any kind of AC unit I've mentioned. So here's the tip. AC companies do not recommend this, I'm sure, but you can place a furnace filter over the indoor air intake vents. Some of you might be saying, hey, ACs already come with filters, aren't those sufficient? No, no, they're, they're absolutely not. You can basically see through them. A good rule of thumb is if you can see through your filter, it's not designed with your health in mind. These are like MERV negative one, right? So why put a furnace filter over the intake vents? Well. It helps capture dust and mold spores, preventing mold from getting inside the unit and colonizing the evaporator, which tends to get wet. The evaporator is where the refrigerant absorbs heat from the indoor air, cooling it down. During this process, moisture in the air can condense on the cold surface of the evaporator coil, making it a wet environment. Mold needs moisture to grow, and it loves dust as a food. I've heard other people say it's Dust is pre-chewed food for mold, which is kind of gross. Anyway, by adding a filter over the intake vent, you can prevent mold spores and dust from reaching the evaporator coil in the first place. And it also helps purify your room's air as a byproduct. To confirm where these vents are, if you're confused, you can use a square of toilet paper to find where the air is being sucked into. So which filters should you use? If you follow content like this, you probably already know that according to a lot of different testers, the best filters to use in terms of both efficiency and airflow somehow are, say it with me, 3M Filtrate. Geez, that sounded like I was so bought by them. I promise I'm not sponsored by Filtrate, though I'd like to be. I don't think they're sponsoring people. I use their MERV 13 filters and I put a link to those in the description. Is it safe to do this? Well, although I've been doing it for a while and have had no problems, again, the manufacturers do not recommend that you do this, so if you do, it's at your own risk. If you're worried MERV 13 could be too restrictive, feel free to use MERV 12, MERV 11, or even MERV 8, which isn't amazing at capturing mold spores, but it's decent and way better than nothing. What size filter should you get? Well, it depends on the size of your intake area, but in general, the best size I've found in the fill treats for this application is 12 inches by 20 inches. Again, linked in the description. If it's too big, that's okay. Tape it around the perimeter, but don't worry too much about creating a perfect seal. And you can definitely bend or compress the filter if you need to, to get it to fit. Here's another indoor air quality hack, I, I mean tip, uh, to reduce mold growth in your home. To allow your AC to dehumidify your space effectively, it should be running for extended periods of time. To extend runtime, you can turn the fan on its lowest speed, or you can try using dry mode, which I'll discuss more in a bit. You can also have the AC cool larger spaces, which will take longer. To do this, open the door of the room the AC is in and use a fan to circulate air between that room and the rest of the home. Simple. Dreo is a company that makes the quietest and most powerful air circulating fans I've found. So I've linked the ones I use in the description. 
They're great because they produce a narrow airstream that's really good for preventing comfort issues. So they're not like, you know, they don't produce like a huge airstream that just like blows on everyone is like super annoying. That's why I like them. Let's talk about dehumidification and AC. Some people think dehumidifiers are not needed if you have air conditioning. That is true in some scenarios and locations, but not others. It depends on so many things. It depends how leaky your house is, how hot and humid your climate gets, how many people are living in your house, whether you're ventilating and how much. And if you have water leaks in your home, like under your foundation, which many of us do without knowing it. Air conditioners can struggle to dry your air when outdoor temperatures are moderate, like between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and humidity is high. This is because the AC may not run long enough to remove significant moisture. So as I mentioned earlier, some ACs have a dehumidify or dry mode as well. Dry mode will still cool your home, but more slowly than regular mode to increase run times. If you're attempting to use your AC mainly to dry your air, like say it's not that hot, but it's very humid, and you turn down your AC to like 66 degrees Fahrenheit so it continues to run, you risk cooling your space too much. Overcooling causes surfaces to drop below dew point, condensation to form, and mold to grow. The risk of condensation increases as you set the temperature lower in an attempt to remove more moisture, especially below 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The kicker with ACs that you have to understand is that the supply air is so much colder than the set point and can cool nearby surfaces significantly, potentially causing them to become damp. So just be aware of that, but test out your AC's dry mode and see how it performs if cool mode isn't dehumidifying enough. I've personally found that it's more effective, convenient, and safe to use an actual high quality dehumidifier like the Santa Fe Compact 70. So how do you know if you need a dehumidifier in addition to your AC? If your indoor dew point gets above 60 degrees Fahrenheit consistently, even with AC, you likely need a dehumidifier as well. Especially test this during the most humid parts of the summer. So if you live in the US, not June, not really the first part of July, but like the end of July and August and early September, that's when humidity is the highest. So it's basically when the outdoor dew point is around 70 or above. This next thing I just, I have to say, for those of us in the US, I want to note that if you live west of this line, you likely understand comparatively little about high humidity. With the exception of around here, it gets much less humid in the western half of the US. To measure your humidity, you're going to need a hygrometer. I linked my favorite one in the description. Also, I have a video on dehumidifiers, also linked in the description, where I show you how to find the dew point and set up a high quality dehumidifier by yourself. Why did I say by yourself like I'm talking to a child? You guys are big boys, you're not children. <laughs> and big girls too. Like, you know, 95% of my viewers are men, but I, I still love the women. I'm, that sounded... <laughs> okay, if you're thinking that your home definitely doesn't have a mold issue and you can create negative pressure to your heart's content, this part of the video is for you. Oh, sorry I pointed at you. Anyway, the mold prevalence data from HUD's American Healthy Home Survey, a 2019 study of 700 homes, found that one third of homes contain Stachybotrys, which is a well-known, highly toxic mold species. It was likely the main contributor to my own mold illness. Eight other toxin-producing mold species showed up in anywhere from 50 to 100% of homes surveyed. So mold issues are extremely common in homes. Why does mold grow in homes? Water damage. It's always water damage. Here are a few photos I took of buildings within walking distance of where I live. Once you know what signs to look for, you can confirm for yourself that water damage is very common. Just go outside. My upcoming Airbnb tour video will discuss those signs. By the way, I'm moving across the country uh, to Washington state. Of course, water damage isn't always externally observable either. Ideally, these problems should be remediated, but if you can't do that, you don't wanna be creating negative pressure in your house by mechanically drawing air through these spaces with a single hose AC. So by now I've made it pretty clear that using the right AC unit can make a big difference in terms of maintaining a healthy home, especially for renters. Thanks for watching. I, I feel like today I earned your subscription, right? Um, I answered so many questions. Uh, if you have more, comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Did I already say subscribe? I forget, who cares? Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.